Okay, hello once again and welcome to AP Human Geography, Where Our States Distributed, Rubenstein, The Cultural Landscape, Chapter 8, Key Issue 1, with your host, Andrew Patterson. Defining states. So we look around the world and we see all these nations or countries, and they're also called states. It's an area organized into a political unit, ruled by established governments with control over its affairs. Now we're not talking about the U.S. states, because those are part of the nation or the state of the United States of America. Countries are also called states, and they have sovereignty, their independence from control of internal affairs from outside states. So sovereignty means uh, don't mess with our state, don't mess with our country because we're in charge. No one tells us what to do in our house. We have sovereignty. Like, for example, we don't want Russia coming into the United States and affecting our election, per se, which potentially happened in 2016 because we have our own sovereignty and Russia shouldn't be affecting our uh, state. Problems defining states. So we try to define what countries are and where they are. Sometimes it's clear and sometimes it tends to be a problem. So for example with uh, North and South Korea we think of them as one state of Korea but obviously right now and since the 1950s 60s they've been separated into two states North and South Korea. And yet sometimes people still claim to be Korean or just simply from Korea. Another issue when we try to define states is China and Taiwan. You see the entire country of China here and we've also got Taiwan who claims to be independent. Um, some people think of them as an independent country. Some people think that well they're just an area that's still Chinese but they kind of have their independent rule. And then the Western Sahara is in a similar situation. States of varying sizes, well, you know, you think about it, it should be easy to define a state because you look at the map and bam, it's clearly outlined. That's pretty easy when you think of places like Russia, which are huge, takes up an entire continent almost, China, Canada, these are huge states. Then you think about states that are as small as cities like Monaco, Andorra, and Malta. Like for example, there's Malta in down there, right off the boot of Italy and Sicily, then we have little Malta. How does that compare to Russia? Well, geographically speaking, as far as size, it's pretty small. A world of states. So the United Nations, in our book, it claims that this is the most important organization in all of the world. Um, that seems to be an opinion to me, and yet here it is presented to us. But the United Nations is an organization that um, is created by the victorious allies after World War II. So we're talking about 1945 after that. It was replaced by, I'm sorry, it, it replaced the failed League of Nations, which was established after World War II, an, an organization trying to maintain peace. It didn't work out because, guess what, the United States, even though the president suggested it, the United States didn't go in on it. So they tried again with the United Nations, and so far it's been working. So the United Nations is a forum for discussion of international problems. Whenever there's a conflict, the United Nations gets together and talks about it and sees whether they need to intervene or whether they can uh, place sanctions against a certain actor in the conflict. But sometimes they'll intervene. Um, you think about the Rwandan conflict. Uh, if you've seen the movie Hotel Rwanda, the UN goes in and they try to protect both sides, but really they're not able to do much because they don't have enough people. And the UN also seeks to address international cooperation on world issues. The state concept, where did it come from? Why isn't it just like all of us living together and doing whatever we want? Well, ancient states, like the city-states of Athens, where you have a city that's kind of like its own state. You know, Athens was thought of as like it's a country. Like it's just a city, but it and the surrounding countryside are really thought of as a city-state, where it governs itself, it's not connected uh, to other cities. I mean, when you look at, look at Greece, there's, there's other... Uh, cities there like Sparta, but really Athens and Sparta fought against each other and they came together and then they fought each with other countries against each other. So it's kind of like these city-states are their own entities. You have countries, like the entire con country of Egypt. This is, you know, well known. Um, it's marked out on the map and it's got its own sovereignty. It controls itself. So it's an entire large area that is the state concept of Egypt. Early European medieval states, these are states that were consolidated by kings after the fall of the Roman Empire. So you have the Roman Empire starting here from Rome, Italy, and it spreads out 
across the uh, earth there in the Mediterranean. And as it moves up into northern uh, Europe, um, it establishes roads and commerce and trade. And then when the Roman Empire collapsed, you had kings that stepped in and took control of these areas. So they kept control of these states or large areas by just their authority that they had in their armies. Then the nation state, where you have a territory that com corresponds to an ethnicity. So you think about um, where is a nation state, where it's just a similar group of people who define themselves as a nation. And you think about Denmark, for example. Um, they are one area that everyone, that, well, for the most part, people there are Danes, and they all live in Denmark. So it's a very similar area. That's more. That's different than the United States because we have so many different ethnicities that live here in the United States that we can't say it's a nation state because we're not all the same. The most important principle is self-determination within the state concept. Um, within a nation state, uh, they claim and desire self-determination where their ethnicity has the right to govern themselves. So let's a look at chapter 8, key issue 1. And you know what? Let's come back in a moment and do key issue 2.